Leaders of the US, Japan, India and Australia have issued a strong warning against any attempt to, quote, change the status quo by force. The joint statement of the Quad Group did not directly mention any specific country, but it comes amid China's growing influence in the Indo-Pacific region and concerns that Beijing authorities could order an invasion of self-ruled Taiwan. CNN's Mitch Ishida with this report. U.S. President Joe Biden said there was no change to the U.S. policy of strategic ambiguity on Taiwan, a day after he angered China by saying he would be willing to use force to defend the island. The cross-strait issue has clearly overshadowed the Quad meeting, but Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida is quick to stress that the group is focusing at maintaining a rules-based global order. え、the four leaders of nations met in Tokyo only for the second time in person since the Quad's establishment. The summit aimed to promote cooperation and development in the fields of health security, in particular delivering vaccination for COVID-19, infrastructure, climate change, critical and emerging technologies. On health security, they decided on a 100 million U.S. dollar to support the Indian healthcare sector and a separate aid for infrastructure development. They've also agreed to share satellite image for disaster mitigation and to track dark shipping and other tactical level activities. On regional issues, they discussed North Korea's frequent ballistic missile test and called for its complete denuclearization, while the leaders also believe they need to extend help to the COVID-19 pandemic there. They've also discussed the situation in Myanmar and the attempts to change the status quo in the East China Sea and South China Sea. Beijing has accused the United States and Japan of manipulation. The Chinese foreign ministry slammed members of the Quad Group, claiming they have been attacking and smearing the country. It vowed a resolute and a forceful response if there should be any attempts in engaging Taiwan to control China. Beijing also accused Washington of concocting its Indo-Pacific strategy to divide countries, saying it will only disrupt peace and stability in the region. Lo Min joins us live from Shanghai. Min Min. Uh, tensions heating up over Taiwan again. The White House clarifying Mr. Biden's comments yesterday, but China not letting that go. That's right. The Taiwan issue became a sticking point at this afternoon's foreign ministry press briefing yet again. Um, the spokesperson not letting go of President Joe Biden's statement yesterday, despite the White House walking it back. Remember, this is the third time that the White House has had to walk back President Biden's statement, and China is not having it. it uh, Beijing sees it as completely disingenuous. It says that the U.S. is playing a word game with the one China principle. It's completely falsified and hollowed out the One China Principle. It's violated its commitments on the Taiwan issue. And it's also both openly and secretly backed a Taiwanese separatism movement within the self ruled island. And the spokesperson ended with a dire warning to the United States, drawing from the lyrics of a well-known Chinese song, which says, quote, when a friend arrives, there is good wine. But if a jackal arrives, it will be greeted with a shotgun. And the spokesperson added that no forces, including the United States, can stop the Chinese people from realizing its goal of complete reunification of the country. Oh, Mimin, as we've already heard, uh, China clearly verbally responding to, uh, responding to the Quad, sending these thinly veiled warnings over Taiwan and the South China Sea. Is there any other kind of response we can expect from Beijing? If Beijing's actions in the past can offer us any clue, then we can expect Beijing to continue to keep up with the surge of warplanes heading near the Taiwanese airspace as a signal of the determination to reunite with Taiwan by force if necessary. Now, Beijing has always said that it sees the court as an attempt to contain China, and clearly it's feeling the pressure to up its ante on its own engagement with Asia-Pacific island nations. Uh, the foreign ministry just announced today 
say that Foreign Minister Wang Yi will be paying an official visit to eight Asia-Pacific nations in two days' time. Uh, and at a press briefing this afternoon, uh, the spokesperson spent a long time giving a lengthy response, expressing firm opposition to the joint statement issued by the US and Japan at the end of the court meeting, uh, saying lashing out, out at the two countries for manipulating China-related issues, for violating international law and for damaging China's sovereignty. And specifically, the spokesperson laid out very clearly what are China's security interests in the region, which includes, quote, an indisputable sovereignty over what China calls the Diaoyu Islands, which uh, Japan also claims and calls the Senkaku Islands. Uh, Beijing says it will respond forcefully to any attempt to uh, engage in Taiwan to control China and that it will continue to consult ASEAN nations to come up with a code of conduct in the South China Sea in order to safeguard peace and stability in the region. Oh, thanks for that. Lo Mimin speaking to us there from Shanghai. Uh, leaders of the court shared concerns about the ongoing war in Ukraine. Both President Biden and Prime Minister Kishida drew links to the group's goal of a free and open Indo-Pacific region. Russia's assault on Ukraine only heightens the importance of those goals. The fundamental principles of international order, territorial integrity and sovereignty, International law, human rights, must always be defended, regardless of where they're violated in the world. え、インドも参加する形でえ、ウクライナでの悲惨な紛争について懸念をま表明し、え、法の支配や、ま、主権及び領土一体性等の諸原則はいかなるま地域においても the final joint statement, though, made no mention of Russia, much less condemned Moscow's invasion of Ukraine. Analysts say it is likely a concession made because of India's close ties to Russia.